Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today, we will set up Airflow on Kubernetes. Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration platform that simplifies the deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. Kubernetes operates by grouping containers into logical units called pods, which can then be managed and scaled as needed. So what are pods? They are a way of grouping containers together inside a namespace. We have covered Docker on this channel, so imagine grouping related Docker containers in a logical group so they share network and security groups. If you need a Docker overview, then I will leave the link in the description below. In this demo, we will install an Airflow instance. We will need an Airflow web server, scheduler, and a worker pod. In addition, Postgres database for Airflow metadata. Instead of managing these as separate containers, we group them in a namespace, so they share the same network and security settings. They start and stop together. We can manage them as a single unit. There are a few prerequisites for this session. We need a Docker desktop installed. Docker provides a Kubernetes single node cluster. In Docker settings, we enable the Kubernetes cluster. You can also enable the system containers. This will display the Kubernetes internal containers in Docker Desktop. While this is being enabled, let's install the other dependencies. Second, we need kube control, a command line tool for Kubernetes. It allows us to run commands and manage our Kubernetes cluster. We can download the kube control exe for our desired operating system. I will grab the Windows version since I am on Windows. Next, we will download the Helm. Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. Using Helm, we can find, share, and use software built for Kubernetes. We can locate the installer for our operating system and download it. It comes in a zip file. We need to extract it and grab the exe file for ease of use. I have copied the exe file on C drive. Last tool we need is kind. It allows us to run a local Kubernetes cluster using Docker. It is designed for a local development environment. We can use the PowerShell command to download it. Once the download is complete, we move this to the tools directory. We need to add this directory to the system path. We launch the system environment variables. Under path, we need to add this directory. You can click new and paste the folder path. We can launch a command prompt in this directory. Let's execute a few basic commands to make sure these tools are working. For kube control, we can see the list of commands available to us. Similarly, we can issue helm commands. So these tools are available and we can utilize them for Airflow install. Let's check the Docker Kubernetes cluster. It's up and running. We can move forward with creating a cluster. We have all the required tools set up. Let's bring up the command prompt. We will start by creating a Kubernetes cluster using kind. We issue the following command. Kind create cluster and we provide a name for the cluster. This will create a cluster using Docker node. This process can take anywhere between 5 to 10 minutes. We will let this run and complete the cluster creation. Once it completes, we will continue. The cluster is set up. It sets the context to the newly created cluster. Now we can use kube control to interact with the cluster. We get the URL for the Kubernetes control plane and the DNS proxy details. We can issue the following command to get more information about the cluster. Next, we use the Helm to add Apache Airflow repo to our cluster. Remember Helm is the package manager for Kubernetes. This repo is already added, but if it doesn't exist, it will add the repo. Let's create a namespace in our cluster. We can use kube control to create a new namespace. We will install our app in this namespace. Let's install Airflow in this namespace. Using Helm, we install Airflow. We provide a release tag and supply the namespace. 
This will install the base Airflow image in this namespace. It create different pods for the Airflow components, such as web server, scheduler, and worker. Also, we will see a pod for Postgres. This process can take a while to complete, so we will let it run and complete. Airflow installation is complete. This deployed the pods to the Airflow namespace. It installed Airflow version 293. We expose the Airflow web server on port 8080. Airflow credentials are listed here. Also, we have the Postgres database details here. Let's issue this command to expose the Airflow web server. We can launch localhost port 8080 to access the Airflow. Let's enter the default credentials to login. Our Airflow instance is functional. However, we do not have any DAGs. You can copy them from your host machine to the pod or build a custom Airflow image to include the DAGs. Let's stop the Airflow instance. I will add a couple of items to the tools directory. First, I will add a DAGs directory. This will hold our Airflow DAGs. To create a custom image, I will add a Docker file. This process is similar to building a custom Airflow Docker image. In the DAGs directory, we have a sample DAG. This is a simple DAG, it prints the date and parameters. In the Docker file, pull the Airflow image and copy the DAGs directory to this image. Let's keep it very simple. Let's go ahead and build the custom Docker image. We issue the Docker command. We pull the Airflow image and add a tag to the custom image. If you are running this for the first time, it may take a little longer as it will pull the base image locally before building it. Our custom image is ready. Now we can load it to our cluster. We use kind to load our Docker image. This is our image and we provide the context to our Airflow cluster. This will load the image to the cluster. Once available, we can use it for Airflow installation. This process can take up for five minutes, so we will let it complete. The image is loaded to the cluster. Now we can use it for installation. I will maximize the command prompt. The next command is longer, so I will need more space. Using Helm, we upgrade the dev release. The base repo is Airflow. We provide the namespace and override the image repo with our own value. Finally, we provide the image tag. This command will install the Airflow using our custom image in the cluster. The installation process can take between five to 10 minutes, depending on the image size. The Airflow installation is complete. We have updated the dev release. Airflow is deployed to our namespace. This is the second revision of this deployment. Let's go ahead and expose the Airflow web server. Now we can access the web server. We have a web server UI open. Let's refresh it, supply the credentials to login. Here we go. We have the example DAG in the UI. We click the DAG to view the details. Let's trigger it to run the DAG. The first task is complete. It prints the date. Then it goes to sleep. The third task prints the parameters passed. This is the DAG we have loaded in our Airflow image. We can access the Airflow and execute our tasks. It's running on a Kubernetes cluster. This is a complete functional Airflow instance. We covered how to get started with Airflow on Kubernetes. We can remove all the pods running in this instance if they are no longer needed to clean up the environment. We can remove the namespace with the following command. And we finally remove the cluster. This is all on Kubernetes for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.